This episode of Inside the Game is powered by MSI Gaming. The game just got real. Head to our website at insidethegame.ca for all the details. What's going on everybody? We are Inside the Game, your one source for everything cool in video games. You want to be a part of the show? Then head to insidethegame.ca where there you can submit a clip and close off our show. While you're there, hit us up over on our YouTube channel and help us with a big like and subscribe. Now coming up on today's show, we have another jam-packed episode. You can tell fall is here because we're reviewing Gears 5. All that and a whole lot more, but first, the inside scoop. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint Beta is just around the corner, but with that comes some exciting news. Ubisoft has announced their post-launch for Year 1 details, and man, it sounds pretty exciting. Year 1 post-launch starts at launch with Operation Greenstone, followed by Episode 2 and 3 coming every four months. Each episode will receive hours of new content and support including new adventure, new endgame content, I'm talking raids, updates, new faction missions, as well as PvP updates and regularly new content. New adventures, a new story driven content that expands the main story of the game will be available with each new episode. Every new episode will bring new end game content. Episode 1 brings the Project Titan raid. Players will explore an active volcano on a new island in Aurora where they need to use all the skills learned on Aurora in intense 4 player co-op challenges. The raid is replayable and adaptable for all playstyles. New faction missions will be available daily and will provide objectives to support the factions in their narrative arcs. New classes, live events, PvP updates, and regular content is on the horizon. Look for more come October 31st. The next big Red Dead Online update is slated to drop on September 10th, and they're going to be introducing three new characters to the Frontier life. First announced in August, the Frontier Pursuits update unlocks bounty hunters, traders, and collectors to the game, each offering its own particular playstyle and progression tree. In addition to the three new specialist roles, Red Dead Online is getting dramatic improvements to player control. Movement in the game will be quicker and more responsive across combat, running, and walking. And while playing defensively, your character will have great damage resistance. Additionally, the update will allow you to redesign your character's appearance without resetting progress. And if that doesn't hit your Red Dead fix, make sure you head over to the YouTube channel and check out the official ITG. We had a Let's Play with all the guys. It was a blast. Honest as you want it to be. You know what you're getting into with this one. But with any opportunity comes risk. Fool enough to try? So CD Projekt Red has had a little bit of confusion going on with their cutscenes. Now, they have went out and said that the entire game, pretty much, is going to be played in first-person perspective. Now, this has got people kind of worried, and, you know, me too, kind of, because a lot of these games, it really, it's kind of hard to capture the whole thing from first-person, but they've gone out and said that there's no worries, the full immersion of the experience needs to be done in first person. Achieving full immersion in a first person perspective game is extremely important and the decision made by the team to go 100% first person in cyberpunk game is something that will benefit it greatly from gameplay and storytelling perspectives. That said, players will be able to see their characters in the inventory screen, during driving sequences, in mirrors, and very occasionally in some of the cutscenes. Hey, my man, you made it. You blowing up all over the news. Are you alone? I just want the money. You got the chip? All right, start her up, bug. Why don't you go to the bathroom, wash up. We gonna be with you in a minute. Wow, oh, come on, man. Your neck, it's a mess. While 
Ubisoft released their PC service, Uplay Plus, but it's come with some hiccups. Some people are being redirected to a 404 page, not able to get their service whatsoever. Some are being recharged for the service. There's a whole mess of things going on. So if you're a Uplay Plus subscriber, you may want to double check your account. Apex Legends has a new update called Voidwalker. Now this is an event, it's going to run a total of two weeks, and it's to explain the Voidwalker's backstory. It also has a new mode to it. This one's going to be a shoddy snipes kind of variant, and they're going to change part of the map for these two weeks. Here's the trailer, check it out. Looking for revenge. I want to know who I am. I had to leave my world to find what I was looking for. They know where you are. Now, it's your turn. Danger, move. Enemies, run. Get out of there. It's me they want. Subscribe to never miss a video and help us by hitting that like button. So this is blasphemy. Gazunte? So this week, me and you had a new kind of game to check out. This one's Blasphemous. Yeah. And it's a it's kind of a side-scroller Metrovania. What, what did you think about this one right off the start? You know what? I, I've played games like this before. Uh, it's been a while since I've played one, you know, this kind of pixelated art style, mm -hmm. 2D side-scroller. But let me tell you, this game is a lot more than what you see on the surface. And <laughs> it's a lot darker than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I really liked it. And yeah, what we do see on the surface was pixel gore, I think was the words we were throwing I, I, yeah, around. And that's, I think that's, you know, probably the most accurate statement you can have when it comes to playing this game. Oh yeah, and it's and it's a good looking game. So you, it is a pixely kind of game. It's a side scroller. So you're not expecting too much out of the graphics department, no. but I feel like it really delivers. There's the very beginning menu even, where you see your character, the mask and stuff, yeah. and he's moving around. I thought that was so fluid. The penitent and one. The penitent yes. one, and the, and the music that accompanies oh, it. The music in this game, like before we even start mm -hmm. talking about the game, just the music, the ambient sound, not even the, the audio of, you know, the FX audio, just the music was amazing. It, oh, yeah. It made you feel it, this kind of ominous feeling the entire time I was playing this game. And I, it was it was a standout for me in this one. Oh, yeah. And, and ominous feeling is correct. There's, It's kind of like a like a sinner Christian apocalypse kind of look to yeah. the game. And that's kind of the feel I get out of your character. You're the, the penitent one, and you're sworn to a life of silence. But you have to, I guess, get retribution on everything in this map. Yeah, and it's and when we say everything, you run into all different kinds of enemies in this game. It, you mm -hmm. know what? So far as I've played through this, I you run into obviously the same NPC style characters as you go, but every you know every room or every screen you enter, because again this is a side scroller, so you you know you go from one screen to the next. 
and every screen you enter, sometimes there's always gonna be a new enemy or a new version of an enemy that you've already faced, and it's like, it just, the variety was there, and the that's mix what makes this game, for me personally, very difficult. Yeah. Because it's, I'm not gonna say it's like a, a full-blown roguelike, but the enemies do a lot more damage than you do to the enemies. Yes. And <laughs> yes. you have to learn what these enemies' attacks are, and when there's such a variety of them, I found that really lent to how difficult this game was. Mm -hmm. You jump in and you enter a screen and they're like, okay, a couple new enemies, what do these guys do? And you, you know, you have Gotta to approach them, and then before you know it, they're doing moves you've never seen before, and then you're dead. Yeah, and there's, well, there's a lot of different moves. You have a parry, and you have, like, charging attacks, and you have, you know, you're just your normal sword attacks. Yeah, like a slide and a magic, dodge, and yeah, a little and a bit of magic. And a slide dodge. So it's, it's difficult, but if you master the, the mechanics of the combat, it's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more so than, dare I say, Dark Souls or something like that, because you leave many different stains around if you die, and you oh, can go yeah. collect those. Collect guilt fragments. Yeah, that's that's one thing actually I thought was really cool in this game. So you have a health bar, and then you have kind of, well, I'm going to call it a mana bar, essentially, no. your power, your magical yeah. power. And every time you die, you leave behind a guilt fragment, and, and it gets marked on the map. So what happens is every time you do die, your part of your mana bar gets covered up, so you can't actually reach full max on that mana bar. And mm. what you have to do to get that back is either visit an area in the map where you can actually pay to get it restored, or go and collect the guilt fragments you leave behind. And I, I'm gonna be honest, there was like one time in this while I was playing it, I had like five guilt yeah. fragments all over the map because I was just trying different screens to see if I can have a different path because that's one thing this game has is many different paths. It's not linear. You're not going from yeah. screen to screen, you know, fighting enemy, 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 boss. You the, you have a lot of different tasks you have to do in this game, and actually you collect a lot of items. Your inventory mm. is expansive in this game. And there's, so you know you have about four, I believe, four things to, to, to conquer on the map, four big major bosses. Now yes. there are other ones and there's sub-bosses and things like that, mm. but you fight them, you collect these items from them, and that makes you a lot stronger and kind of gives you more abilities or lets you customize your character yeah, with like certain really lets things. Yeah, it you pick how you want to play the game. So even though there's a lot of items on the map, they're all important, mm -hmm. and I didn't find it too confusing, and I kind of liked that there's different areas around the map to kind of bring these items to. Yes. Different shrines, different rituals, because this, this map is really cool. It yeah. looks really nice. There's Ooh. little villages and stuff that pop up here and there, and, and going through them, they felt like full flushed out places. Yeah, there's, you know, they are populated to a point. I mean, obviously, we're in a time period in this game where, you know, things aren't very good and people yeah. are ill and, you know, population maybe isn't as high. But again, these are all little touches in a game. Like I said, right at the beginning, you just see a 2D side scroller pixelated and you're like, okay, you know, let's see what this one's all about. But this game offers so much more than what you see. And mm -hmm. I think we've covered a lot of it here and there's just, there, I felt like every screen there was something new. Yeah. For me. And and like you said, there's there's lots of items and you don't necessarily know exactly what the items are for when you collect them because you may not even have been given a mission for yeah. it yet, but you have the item. So it's all things where the the puzzle will get together as long as you travel all over this map. That's it. Being an open map and having different difficulty of areas and different options to go, mm -hmm. you really mixes up what you come in contact with first. So you, me and you could have a completely different kind of experience oh, because yeah. I just didn't get the relic title. Totally yeah, or you, yeah, you travel to a different screen that maybe I didn't, right? But it encourages you to explore the whole map yeah. and kind of if you're in a really hard spot, just kind of back off and go somewhere else. Go it somewhere else. Maybe else. you can get an gain an ability going somewhere else that'll help you get through another part of the map that you maybe were stuck on. And this is another thing I wanted to touch on because it is, it is their environmental effects. Mm -hmm. There is a wind effect in a certain area of yeah. this map. And if you don't pay attention which way the the wind's going, you will fall short on your jumps, you'll jump too far. Sometimes you need that wind to <sighs> send you really far. It, <laughs> you know what, it's it's one of those things, like I said, I died a lot in this game, so oh, yeah. you come back to certain areas and uh, I gotta remember, okay, the wind here, you gotta watch the wind, and then I'll be jumping around fighting enemies, and before I know it, I make a jump and I fall short, I'm like, oh, the wind! <laughs> I'm like, oh, I found myself, you know, going back to the, the totem, the checkpoint totems often to heal up, which I thought was really cool. All the checkpoints, mm. you can regain all your health, and you can actually kind of self-sacrifice yourself in this game and take damage to regain mana and I kind of found a little bit of a loophole where you could damage just, yourself repeatedly to fill your mana bar and then just reheal at the totem and that allows you to get full health full mana so I was like well you go in a little more prepared but if that's an exploit you need that to get through this game because <laughs> yeah. it's actually difficult they oh, hit you with so real hard. difficulty and it's that's so nice. hard but it's what keeps you coming back because it challenges you to the point where you you want 
to be successful. You want to pass through and be like, yes, I got it. Yeah. Oh. And, and this game screams that all over. And like we said, it's got this kind of dark feel to it. There's there's a lot about this game that is just, I just enjoyed so much. I wasn't expecting to like this game as much as I did. No, it's, I, I had the same experience. Right off the first boss fight, second boss fight, I knew this was this was a good one. Yeah, there's cutscenes in this game. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a, you think of pixelated art style, 2D side scroller, maybe a little bit of dialogue, mostly action you know, loose loose storyline. This had a very expansive story mm -hmm. in it. And you kind of get explained the story as you go when you meet different characters on this map. And there was just there was there was a sense of a larger game here, not just a run around hack and slash that was just happened to be a little more difficult than your normal one. You were trying to follow this this bit of story, this bit of lore. The people, the the land, the, exactly. the bosses, it and all fits. Everything together. had a backstory. Everything you collect, there you can read a little lore blurb about it. Like they thought of everything in this game that would help you understand what's going on in the world that you are in and i mean honestly scott i think this one was just a blast all around oh yeah all right scott well i think we kind of gave it away we had a really good time <laughs> playing blasphemous if you got to score this one what are you going to give it so this one's solid in all aspects i didn't know what i was falling into but i i'm i'm into it and i got to give this one an 8.5 you know what, I'm right there with you. Like I said, the audio is really what caught me at the beginning, but then once I got into the gameplay, no matter how difficult it was, I was always coming back to play more, and I like the ability that you can kind of just change your guy up as you go, more powerful, you can build him d different ways. Mm -hmm. Like you said, my gameplay a lot different than yours, but we both had a great time. I'm right there with an 8.5. Blasphemous is a great pixelated hack and slash platformer. The ominous soundtrack really lends to the overall creepiness of this one. And with save points coming few and far between, you'll find yourself replaying certain areas of this map over and over again. But the anime variety kept the overall feel of the game fresh and challenging. This is definitely a title you should check out. I'm 300 meters away. It's not too bad. Okay. There's a guy up top. Yeah, there is. Oh. Alright, he's got a gun. Hey, get off my screen. Way is deadly. Wow, okay, that was a glitch. Wow, okay. Alright, hey. oh. I see him. Ah! Oh! I got two up on the roof. Ow! I can use some help here, boys. Yeah. Hey. Oh, oh, I'm down. It? How? I'm coming. Oh. oh, behind me. Or is that you, Nate? No, that's a bad guy. I got a bad guy, like, right on me. I'm hacking the turret. Oh, I'm right. on the turret. Man. I missed every single bullet. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> help me. Are these loot boxes like random? I got 30 seconds. Oh shit! Anybody? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're random. Yeah. I'm All right, I'm on the way, Drew. All right, I got 20 seconds left. Just gonna jump right off this building. You were on top of the building, and then all of a sudden you were gone. Oh, what happened there? Okay, there we go. I have five seconds left. I got you. You're you're like above me. No, you, you didn't. Oh, there we go. I got you. Nice. Right in the foot. Thanks. Appreciate the help. <laughs> <That's a little laughs> There's a crate over there, Nate. I don't know what you have for I guns. Guess. It's over here. I got a pistol. Oh, sorry. A shotgun and a sniper. Yeah, over here. 
There's a crate right here. <laughs> hey guys, right there. I need some help, Nate. Oh. What's up? Oh uh, no, it won't. You jump it won't Let me jump. <laughs> it just won't <laughs> let me. Hmm. Uh, I would have been really far. Are the uh, frames on the X? Is it 60 FPS or is it kind of... Oh, I'm not getting any... I'm not getting any choppiness or anything. Yeah, very smooth. Are you? Are you? I'm getting like a little. Not much though. Like, no, I wouldn't say it's yeah, be affecting. Oh, what's your... Oh, there... Okay. I got good enough guns. Oh, um, there you go. Got some gloves. Gloves. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> this guy's That's popping pop. off. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a friendly fire? Just no. Just a desk pop. Excuse me. Hey! Mess you? Mess with my deagle. Get juked! <laughs> yeah, I got a deagle to you. Alright. Where are we supposed to go? Uh, I don't know. Oh, hey, you no, took no, us here. <laughs> I kinda think we're in the wrong spot. We're close. Where do we have to be? Well, Where that, uh... Question mark is? Free well, uh, maybe oh. we can go there and check it out. Is there a vehicle in there other than a boat? Oh, question mark, I imagine, just like uh, something undiscovered. Where, where is the mission? <laughs> oh, it's way over <laughs> here, guys. It's the big yellow circle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's located. Unless that's me. You guys all have the same thing. I just shot a bird out of the sky. Oh, I can collect it too. So what I get? It's located on the coast. I got animal protein. North of the source. <laughs> it has a lighthouse visible from afar. It's over here. That's right there. My <laughs> bad. <laughs> Hey, right, let's steal some cars and get get up there. <laughs> Your your question mark is some bad guys here. Uh, I killed him. No, oh, it's over there. Where are you going? Yeah, it's north. Right? It's north of here. I'm driving to loot this place. He just drove past me. Oh, I didn't even see you. The size of these crates, and what do you get? Like a little handgun or some gloves? Yeah, oh, that that massive. is not. I just got a stoner. I got an LMG. Ooh. Oh yeah. Nice. Yes. Yep. Ammo. I got a, a, a desert oh, eagle as I got well. A, oh, I got a stoner too. Nice. Pretty happy with that. I just got a flashlight or something. I'm not. I'm not sure what that is. Well, investigating. Very nice. Fog. Yeah. Thanks. Where is that? Nice. Alright, where's the map? Where are we supposed to go? To oh. basically north. Is that where we're going now? Yeah, hop yeah in the I marked truck. it out. That's, that's where this mission is. All I right. just found a bunch of crates over here to loot. That's what I was doing. Oh, just credits. Can't go wrong. We're going four by four and Drew. Alright, let's go. Whoa, we're, leaving, this stuff? we're leaving the other two behind. We don't need them. <laughs> what, what is this? Oh, those what? birds. Yeah, you can shoot them and get protein. I shot one out of the air. 
I get <laughs> protein? Yeah. Nice. I know. <clears throat> oh. Came in real hot, true. <laughs> My god. Mm, delicious. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Oh my god. I just got a shotgun. <laughs> Alright, there's our mission objective over there. I'm gonna go check this crate out, though. Good job on getting us here, Corey. Right. No problem, man. Am I the only one behind? <laughs> yeah, I see <laughs> yeah, That's what you there. call it. <laughs> oh, I got a hat! <laughs> I got a field Just wait cat. till you see my ride. Uh, what? Oh, Very yeah, nice vehicle. Oh, no, no, there you go. I guess we all get the same thing out of there. Oh, you guys can open it too? It's not like first come, first serve? No, well, you can open it as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, you get your own version of it. It's like this we guy. All, we all got, we all got a hat. I'm not gonna hurt anyone. Yeah. Mad Schultz sent me. You don't look stuff. like homesteaders. Well, I worked... I, I work uh, for Skeltech. Mads is a friend. When Sentinel started arresting people, he helped us out. Why did he say that? Watch out, guys. I'm behind a. The chopper got to this island from a Navy ship just a few dozen clicks off you. this coast. I can get these boats mm, back to that scene. ship, and I can come back here with hope. <laughs> well, <laughs> certainly sounds better than taking a boat all the way to Auckland. <laughs> what happened to your chopper? I'm still working that out. You leave it someplace? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maurice Fox, and this is my daughter, Harmony. It's nice to meet you. Call me Nomad. You know, we, we met another soldier. He said his name was, um, Hill. Josiah Hill? Is he here? No, uh, he helped us get around some of Sentinel's men, but he was injured. Well, uh, not, not, not badly. We left him at this uh, fishing building area thing. I actually think I know what you're talking about. I'll pick him up after I get back. Uh oh. No, uh, the swarm stuff that took his uh, chopper. Yeah. Not cool. Not cool. Oh my. Woo! More bad guys. Everyone take cover! Alright, so uh, those Humvees are here. Like, hot on us? Uh, I just love it when I climb stuff that I don't want to. Got you. We got what, one left? Uh, there's another vehicle inbound. Oh. New clue. <laughs> Alright, we good? I think so. There's that other vehicle over there, you can see it, right? Oh, it's on its way. Alright. What's going on here? Cutscene. Cut scene? Gotta be. What the hell was that? Give me a minute. My God. Those people. It, it, it must be a, a, a new security programmer. Holy flying cow. My guess is. My guess is nothing could come to or leave this island as long as it's on. That must be what brought down my chopper. I want to go home. Me too, kiddo. Listen, <clears throat> you have to get these people and you have to get out of here. What? No one is coming to save you and there's no ambulance on the way. You have to run. You have to get to Air One. 
Okay, yes, yeah. Uh, are you coming with us? Whoa, Obi that's... walked right through that, that man. Right. Like wow. That fishing villa you left him at was a fallback yeah. point. There may be other soldiers. Oh yeah, middle of it. Middle of it. <laughs> just, right, just standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it? Whoa, whoa! What the? Hi. That was fun. <laughs> They're just like, hey, you guys done your cutscene? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, All right, new skill point. That was that was the mission. Just a Killed little it. side mission. Scott, it is fall because why? Gears Five is here. Okay. No, 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 you don't want to see this. I'm sorry. Kate? I'm sorry. Alright Scott, you and I jumped into Gears 5 by the Coalition. This is a big title coming for Xbox. Something they really need to hit hard and hit heavy with. Thoughts? Oh, well this is a big AAA game and it's also going to be on Game Pass. So they're kind of risking a lot here. Yeah, they are. certainly are. They're putting it out on a limb, but my first impressions of this, wow. <laughs> that kind of sums up a lot of it right there. Man, I was impressed. This game is stunning. And the story, honestly, had me hooked right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I was invested right away. Now, I have to I have to add on that. I played Gears 4, and the story yep. was not at no. all nearly as, as much of a draw. No. It got boring. Close. It got stale. Yep. I, I, I'm a Gears fan. I played some 4, but it just wasn't kind of what I was expecting. This time around, the cutscenes play like a movie. Yes. All the characters are really cool. Yeah. All the the combat goes into the cutscene seamlessly a lot of the time. Yep. This game just was a lot more of the package that I was looking for. It was polished. That's mm. what it comes down to. Is this from the writing to the audio to the visuals to the voiceovers, everything? You know what? Coalition. Good job. On Great that. job. This is a fantastic Gears game. One that nobody from a new player like myself, because I'm not one from way back from Gears. I came a little late with Gears 4, kind of went, eh. yeah. but then Gears 5 pops up, man. If just... you if this is your first Gears experience, this is the right one to try out versus yeah. 4. I would not even touch 4. No, but it does, what I do like what they do with Gears 5 is that they give homage, they pay homage to old Gears games. Mm -hmm. So there are certain parts where I go, man, I know there's more to this part that I'm missing. But I like where they're leading with it. So if you are an original Gears fan, you're going to get that throwback mm -hmm. to some of those little tie-ins, the little snippets and Little bits of the story eggs, that they right? bring back up again. Marcus yeah. Phoenix is a returning character. You get these these kind of old staples in the game, and, and they're they're grizzled, but I'm glad they're there. They kind yeah. of they direct the narrative really well. Baird being on the radio with you all the time, that's, that's, awesome. that's an old throwback, and I, I really like that. Like, it kind of fits his personality and everything. Yeah. You have this fun kind of kind of dialogue going on all the time. The main focus this time though, I think it kind of had a lot of concern with a lot of people, is that your main protagonist is Kate. Mm -hmm. And her storyline though is phenomenal. That is really what's kind of hooked me and kind of carried me through. You start off with everybody right at the beginning. Okay, well, let me back this up. Mm -hmm. Because when you start the game, you go into boot camp. And mm -hmm. that is more one of the most dumbed down, brutal things I've 
ever played as a tutorial. Yeah, This is like really... if an alien came down and said, I've never played a video game, and you handed them the controller. <laughs> it literally walked you through step by step from how to shoot a gun, to throwing, to cover, to this, to that. It was like 20 minutes of just me bashing my head against the wall trying to get through this. It was a little extended, yeah, and you're getting little quips from Baird and the robots and stuff, but it was Man. it was dry. But in contrast, they just slam you right into the campaign, finally, where the action gets super intense, yeah. and, and then it's it breaks it up too. Later on in the game, it's not just a linear kind of path that you're running through. I like that touch. A little I slow really like down, that. right? Yeah. So they 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 bridge the gap between like. The good storyline yep. and the crazy chaotic fights. Yeah. But they do so in such a way where you're moving through the, the levels and it seems fresh. I found in 4, and this is mainly just a gripe at 4, but everything <laughs> was a hard mode, or everything was a horde mode rather. So yeah. you would fight into a, a station and then you just hold it against a wave of enemies. And that was, that was so boring. I still feel that a bit here, though. You can tell when the enemies are about to come at you, yeah. and you're about to defend this little area that you're in, and kind of push forward. But there's so much of it too. When you, man, I don't want to spoil, but some of these areas are so massive, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about the skiff. Yes, this that was thing really cool. is this new for Gears. Yes, it is never, new. Eh? They've had vehicles, but yes. nothing like this. This skiff. So it's like, how do you describe this guy? A parachute. It's, on, it's like a dog sled, but instead of yeah. dogs, it's a parachute. It's a parachute, that, yeah. man. This thing is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like snowboarding. It is so cool from the snow to the desert you go in and stuff. It, it was, man, I had a blast. I could honestly just kind of traverse the world just on the skiff. What a well-crafted idea for a vehicle to use. It is so cool. And it's got utility. It has a gun. You can put your guns on it to store, <laughs> you so you're bringing stuff too. around. Man, it was cool. I was that popping was... off from one level, bringing my guns, storing my guns. So you got to bring your heavies, right? Mm -hmm. Coming in with the, I love the, the tri-gun. Tri yeah, 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 the tri-gun oh, yeah. is so good. I love, man, I love Gears 5. It was so good. So we're mentioning the skiff and running around on all these crazy huge levels. Yeah. This game is just beautiful. I'm playing this on a Xbox One X and I have yeah, a 4K too. TV. Yep. So I, I get the, the absolute beautiful <laughs> particle effects and the smoke and the fire. The lighting. The lighting, even just the menu. Why is the menu so <laughs> high definition? I, it's, it's really just quite beautiful. And then not only just how it looks, the sound is just as good. There's the coalition stepped up their game this time around. They oh, yeah. really came together to form one beautiful package. The lighting effects, like you walk into certain environments and the way the sun shines through the level, through the trees, and you see this mist kind of go through. And then you're walking through snow areas and the mm -hmm. depth that you feel like you're traversing through that level. And kicking up little bits Man. of snow here and there and sliding down oh, mountains and stuff. Oh, like so it, good. Oh. Well, I went up one part of the mountain, you clear out the level and I came back. My track was there from the first time I went up. Ah, yeah, like that's cool. Small little touches like that, the little details. Man, they paid attention to everything. I'm impressed. Well, and little details. All these, all these buildings you're going through are a lot less blown up than the original kind of trilogy of Gears. Yeah. So the games used to look good, but now they look good, and there's the map so populated. All these bookshelves have are yes. just loaded. There's there's garbage and scraps here and there. Oh yeah, it's but there's littered. just it's just such a busy world, and it, and it looks a lot more full than the old games. It looks more believable in a drastic environment that's kind of been destroyed and ruined at certain areas, right? Mm -hmm. But I hit one part earlier in the week, and it was massive. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was huge. And you're inside this thing, and I could, I was, like, my jaw hit the ground. Now, one thing that you and I were doing is that I played a little differently than you because I played with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and that allowed us to play split screen. See, I actually had my girlfriend and a friend. Oh, I went for the three player split screen. Nice. I have never seen anything cool quite like this before. Yeah. So we can be the main characters yep. and the third player gets to be our, our Jack, our robot. Jack is cool. And Jack's really cool. He's, he's cool. He's got a shock probe. He's got a, like yep. a flash the thing. The zapper thing is one of the best additions to this game. And you're customizing him the whole way through. You're finding yep. these collectibles that you use to upgrade Jack and he gets yep. these new abilities and you get to customize those and make them better. That's cool. I like that. It's open-ended kind of gameplay. It's, it's perfect.
There's so many options with Jack. So he's got a po uh, passive slot, and then he's got two other abilities. And the way it works is that I can use Jack to, certain, to line up certain abilities that I want, and then my girlfriend had it set up for her to use Jack for other abilities. So if we were getting in, I was sending Jack out to go, like he, put, he would drop this, um, the zapper trap down. Yeah. And then, but then she would hit up with the pulse, and then all of a sudden we get a pulse ah. wave through. So we're hitting the jack twice. So it was really cool. So yeah, if you're playing extra. single player, you're using them only once. But if you jump in with multiple people at the same time, you're able to use jack ability a little bit more often and stuff. I thought it was really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Damn, dude. Dude, they fucking crushed this. They thought about it. All right, they so let's, uh, okay, let's do this. So glad they So. This week we are going to, let's wrap this up with, this week we're talking about the campaign, the campaign only. Next week we'll be back again. Then we're gonna do a deep dive into the multiplayer and stuff. Cool. Okay. Hell yeah, I'm gonna play our Let's Play. Yeah, well we're gonna do a Let's Play this week on the show. We can all jump in and do a horde mode or yeah. the new escape mode as well, right? Yeah, I wanna see what that's about because I don't know what that is, it's new. Yeah, yeah, you dive in, you gotta go down in the hives. Okay, right? Yep. Okay. All right, Scott, you and I are talking about the campaign, and this week, this is what we're focusing on, is the campaign of Gears and how well it stands up. Is it worth everyone's time? Did the Coalition do what they should have done for a AAA title and revive Gears, I think, from where they kind of slacked off a little bit last time with Gears 4? Next week, we'll be back again, where we're going to do a deep dive into the multiplayer side. So let's wrap this up, Scott. Anything else you want to touch on before we go, or you want to score Gears 5 campaign? I'm ready to score this one. I think let's we hit it. just about every little nail. Uh, I have, uh, What a huge package. I'm just, wow. I gotta give this one a nine out of 10. I think they really revived Gears. You know what? You got me too. I think they've done an outstanding job. Really caught me more than I anticipated. The campaign is so good. It is solid. I'm there for the 9.5. Where are we going? Back to where it all began. Who's in the shadow? Gears 5 campaign was the complete package. Outstanding visuals, great gameplay, fantastic voiceover, and Kate's story is a thrill that will keep you coming back for more. Once you get past the boot camp, you won't turn back. One of the best Gears in years. Subscribe to never miss a video and help us by hitting that like button. So this week for Mobile Mansion, I had Rick and Morty, Pocket Mortys. This game is it, kind of really cool. It's a lot of the Rick and Morty kind of humor that we're used to, but it's kind of just a skin of Pokemon. Now that might sound kind of lame, but when you think about all the Mortys and all the different universes there are in that uni like the Rick and Morty plethora of universes, there's a lot they could pull from and it's all hilarious and they really just take everything they can from the show. There's all kinds of sound effects of Morty. There's Rick's voice is, must be Rick's voice. Oh boy, Morty, get him, get him Morty. Morty. This game was quite a surprise for me. It's kind of a casual thing. I, I don't play it too often, but it, when I want that, that little mobile game moment, I play this one and it, I have fun catching all the Mortys and combining them all together to make some weird, gross Super Morty. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, and if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, you should definitely check this game out. I will get you to the healing center. All right, Scott, this week we're reviewing Unlucky 7 for Unlucky Us. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so this week we had a game called Unlucky 7 to review. Now this is a point and click kind of adventure game and it's got a, a storyline that kind of presents itself right at the start. You're, uh, you're kind of this robot <laughs> character. You go through a couple different characters, but there's this weird kind of cannibal party you're trying to set up. And, well, that's... Yeah, so it, it pretty much starts off, you're an android being talked to from what you believe is your master, I guess. 
and it's just kind of right off the hop it's like okay it's like they're kind of swearing in it and i was yeah. kind of like are you trying to be cool because it's not really that cool to me and then like it is it's I, a weird subject matter of like this 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 alcoholics anonymous meeting that you're you're trying to turn into like a murder mystery scenario. Yeah, so the entire game is pretty much played from two different perspectives. The slave and the people that are basically hosting a, a TV show on the dark net, they call it, where they cook people and eat them. Mm -hmm. So you're playing it from this perspective, and then you're playing it from the other perspective, which is, I guess, the unlucky seven crew members mm -hmm. that have been picked to be eaten on TV. So they don't really know that, I guess, obviously. Yeah, but, they're they're uh, really messed up during the whole ordeal, too, because they're this Alcoholics Anonymous group. So it's it's rough to follow the storyline, and that's that's where I want to begin this. So this, this game's all very story-heavy, and... You're trying to read all the text from all these people. There's no voiceovers. No, it's, it's all just gibberish kind of simlish speak. But not only that, you're reading the you're reading these these sentences and you want to get into it, but half of the sentence is just nonsense because they're all messed up and drunk presumably. Honestly, the the writing in it like like you said, like when they're drunk, it's just like they're drunk. I'm like, what am what What's didn't even, even going make on? sense? Yeah. So that was weak, but there's just too much reading. The entire game is reading. Mm -hmm. And when you just hear these kind of annoying voices constantly blabbering like, back blah, blah, and blah, forth. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such an annoying oh, sound. Oh, it's and, irritating. But you see, you're reading all these things and you have to talk to all these characters to get to the meat of your task, whatever you have to do, which is in most cases a recipe. A weird kind of recipe you have to put together. So I might have to make you would drink. But to do that, there's five items spread about this room, and I have to talk to every person in the room to figure out what's supposed to be in that drink, or whatever it is. Then I have to go around the room and find every little interactable item, like a drawer or a mixer or something like that, just to figure out where I'm putting these items now. Or maybe there's a drawer that I didn't know, that's where the special item is. So there's this everything weird... is just drawn out in my opinion. It's yes. like it, it, everything, it's like, okay, I gotta, we gotta go down the elevator. Well, it's like, we need to distribute the weight. I need to walk across the entire place. Oh. It's like, why is there just, it's just so much like, it's like wasted space. I don't even, it's like, they're just filler. That's all it is, it's, it's just lots of boring and filler. Is, is that supposed to be the game where you level these, the weight or where you change the dials to all like it's be... like a fetch recipe puzzle because the puzzles in it too they're awful like they're so basic and weak yeah the the main puzzle the hardest thing is getting all these items into like a drink or getting all these mixed things into like a device to use on a door or whatever like it's just it's so convoluted to find out what you need to get to put it all together because there's no real difficulty it could have just been four items that you put together to make this drink but instead, they'll offer one of them will have uh, like a doubled up effect. You'll have to have two peppers or something. But, but you don't, don't know worry. that. But don't worry, too. You can only have one pepper in your inventory at a time. So you have to go grab mm -hmm. the pepper, walk, put it in there, walk back to the pepper, grab another freaking pepper, put walk it back over, in, put it's, it in. Everything is honestly and then, this is oversight. And if you put them in in the wrong order, yes. you messed up that puzzle. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. oh, and then and then not only that, so you put all these things in this in this cup. It's ready to go. And then you realize you've done it wrong. Well, you still have to go over and give it to the person or whatever, interact with the object. It'll have to tell you you're wrong, and then you have to go through all this dialogue about how they're chastising you for being wrong. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so, it's so brutal, because I wanted to make good progress in this game, but every single time I'd reload it, I'd be at the start of the chapter, too. So I'd have to go do all these recipes all over again. And I, I rem memorized what they were, but if I put one item in in the wrong order, it's garbage. It's, I can't use it. I got to do it all over again. Yeah, it, the whole oh. game is just not that great. Uh, so this game has a mess to it, but there is a couple kind of saving bits. There's 
These characters that you meet, and as you meet them, you get the option to choose whether they're like an, an animal person or just a human person, which was cool actually. And I, I kind of like, enjoyed that. Yeah, I like how I get to pick the crew of Unlucky Seven that I'm around. That that was at least something. You can't change your own character, but you can change those characters. So that was kind of a nice thing. The, the music in the game, it's not necessarily outstanding or super ambiotic. Uh, ambiotic is that yeah. the right word? Right? Yeah. But like, it's just. It's there. It's okay. It breaks up the blah, 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 blah kind of voices <laughs> that you get. Oh, no, nothing can break that, no. unfortunately. But so I don't know, man. All in all, with this game, I I wasn't very impressed. So no. What are you gonna score this? So this one, I want to enjoy it, and I want to get to what the actual like point of the game is. But it's so buggy and 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 messed up that I got hung up on walls and stuff. I couldn't just point and click to move my character around. There was just, it was just difficulty put where there didn't need to be difficulty. And it just doesn't seem like it's a very finished game at all. I, I have to give this one a two. Man, I'm pretty close to you. I had a, all the same issues as you. The whole game just kind of felt like an unpolished, unfun game. I didn't really know what I was playing while I was playing it. So and we tried, we tried to find the fun, but we tried and we failed. So this is getting to 1.5. Oh. Between janky controls, boring puzzles and recipes to solve, a poorly portrayed story with endless text, this game really falls short in almost every aspect. Now? Yeah, that's yeah, Kyle. Sorry, that was me. That's Kyle oh, dude. What? <laughs> we were just talking about that, Kyle. Man, we hate the hiccups. That's funny. I had hiccups earlier today. They're just brutal. Yeah. Oh, it's awful. They start to hurt when they get to a point. You know? Yep. Oh, for They're sure. They're all painful. It makes me so mad. Got one. Don't go in there. No. Nope. Ah, oh, no. Right. He's just yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> ah. Five seconds to go. Oh man, how did I get stuck with the diffuser? Oh, I hear somebody I down past the stairs there. Where is that one up? I'm following you, but I'm keeping distance. I'm up on the roof as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a guy right around the corner from me. I can hear yeah. him breathing. I got company right here with me. I'm watching to your left there, Drew. On, we have 30 on seconds, guys. That doorway to your left. I'm just watching it for you. Yeah. Fifteen seconds remaining. That I'm whole ten, wall I'm ten is meters away. Oh man. One up, four remaining. There's just one left, we gotta kill him, guys. Uh, I got the plant down. I just got the plant down. Oh, I almost killed him. He's right on my dead body, guys. I think almost killed him. I got both 30% of his health. Uh, that's Captain. Steve's right above you there, Drew. Oh, he's in there, Drew. He's, yeah. He's gonna start down towards him. you. Coming down. Yeah. Got him. Woo. Oh, nice. Silly <laughs> boy. What do you think he was doing? Oh, man. <laughs> it was a bit of a garbage goal, but it still counts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Okay, heads up, guy. I'm going yep. to. I'm going to open this up. In. Right to my right? Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll cover uh, the doorway to the left. Oh, there we go. Knock, knock. It's open to the left, so just in case. 
Okay. Nothing right below us. Alright, I'm gonna, gonna throw a flashbang in there. Okay. Nothing. No. Watch that door. I'm gonna shoot this door open, Kyle. Okay. I'm gonna get cover behind us at the moment. I still don't have footprints. I see one. Yeah, they're all inside the room, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I hear footprints. Got one. Come on, down me, here, but Steve. I see Steve running around. I just tagged one. He was behind Going the shield that killed him. That you just opened up there, Drew? Yeah. Yeah, you're in there now? I don't oh. see nothing. He was in the shield. There's nothing in here. Okay. Okay, I'm going in this room. No, it's totally clear. Come on who's, down here, Steve. Who's got the infuser? Steve's got it? Oh, what? Yeah. Steve, we need you Steve, down here. Steve, come here. Come on, Steve. Run, buddy. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right there, buddy. There, let's hold this down. Diffuser is active. Protected at all costs. Dude. I hear movement. Okay. Coming down. Yeah, Somewhere nice. Yeah, she <laughs> <man. laughs> <laughs> Got it. The other guy's down there too. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for it. He's going through the roof right now. Yeah, there oh, you go. Watch that. Oh, uh, yeah. That was great. Did you throw punch him? Yeah. <laughs> and it was a throw punch. Good job, guys. Oh, Drew, man, you would have had that if I didn't get the throat punch at the end. No, that's all good. All right, Corey, that is another episode in the books. Now, each and every week, we post a highlighted clip, something cool to feature to end off our show. Who do we have this week? This week, we have Motive Money 25 with a sneaky little kill at Rainbow Six Siege. Nice. Let's check it out.